Welcome everybody. This is the program for the Rotary E Club of Silicon Valley for this week, and we are really excited because we have uh, an unusually cool program of innovation and and service for you today. Uh, I want to I want to tell you a little bit how I learned about Alice and Stacy and their work uh, at Solite Design uh, with the Solar Puff. So I get I get this Kickstarter email every week that says Here are projects we love. And it tells about wildly cool projects that are out there. And there was this picture of this little little cube-looking thing that was all lit up, and I thought, hmm, you know. And I went and followed it, saw that, uh, that they were trying to raise $25,000 to get these things uh, built up to do all sorts of wonderful stuff that they'll tell you about. Uh, and noticed very soon after that they, they, they'd rather passed that $25,000 mark. And, uh, you know, at, at, at the point that I was looking at this most recently, it was just over $446,000. So uh, clearly a lot of people think that what you're doing makes sense. But who these people are, right? Uh, Alice Chun is the co-founder and CEO of Solite Design and the inventor of the Solo, Solar Puff. Uh, she is a professor of design and material culture at Parsons, the new school for design. Uh, Stacy Kelly is the co-founder and chief operating officer of Solite and has the dual role of being responsible for managing the manufacturing and shipment of products while also developing strategic business relationships. Very cool stuff. I am excited to have you guys tell this story to our members and our guests, and I welcome you. Alice, the podium is yours. Thank you so much, Rushton. It's, it's an honor to be here, and we're so privileged to, to be in front of you um, to tell our story and hopefully inspire others to do um, similar things with um, their ideas and dreams. So, uh, Rushton, should, should I share? Go ahead and do the share of the slides. That'll be perfect. Okay. And remember uh, that we're choosing the entire screen option. While you're bringing those up, by the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce the group that we've got in the room. So we have uh, we have Shags Shagger, our membership chair. Uh, we have Richard Nags in uh, in Cape Town, South Africa, and Chris Cochran in uh, in Ontario, Canada. And and so we've we've got an international crowd uh, to to hear Stacy and Alice. And Alice, I'll hand it back to you. Okay, so um, Stacy and I started this company called Solite Design, and our main purpose is that Solite makes beautifully designed and sustainable home lighting solutions for the global consumer. And what we uh, intend to do is to design products that appeal to um, the eco-friendly consumer in first world, as well as bring sustainable lighting products to regions where there is no power grid. Um, and in terms of the philosophy of how we are um, structuring the idea of our business is that um, there are certain ideas for innovation that um, I have to refer back to a um, an author, a favorite author, author of mine called Attilo Calvino who wrote a book called Six Memos for the Next Millennium and in this book he talks about principles for the next millennium that would be important for innovation and progress and those principles are lightness, speed, accuracy, multiplicity, and transparency. And within this, the context of uh, these principles, he talks about the idea of lightness, which we believe soul light is quintessentially about lightness. Um, and he talks about the story of Perseus. And in order for Perseus to actually defeat Medusa, who is the monster of the story, Perseus um, he basically has to take a different and alternate um, strategy in terms of destroying the monster. So basically, uh, the idea of Solite is that 
we believe that there are certain monsters in the world. And the next slide is showing that one of the monsters is darkness. And that when you see this map, we can understand that basically only one quarter of humanity live without a power grid. And because of this, people are using a kerosene fuel to light their world at night. The other monster that's out there is fossil fuels. And right now, apparently 60% of the GDP is in energy consumption. Now, um, when I was um, pregnant with my son, I realized after he was born that he had asthma. And basically, this is in 2004, and after the 10th time going to the doctor's office, we realized that there were so many kids that had asthma and allergies, and basically, I did my research and I realized that one out of four kids in New York have asthma, which is 70% higher than the rest of the country, and that 75% of the pollution in the air comes from buildings, not from the cars, and basically the pollution is due to energy consumption. And further research showed that just using a light bulb for four hours every day by one person can create 90 pounds of carbon emissions a year just from one person using a light bulb for four hours every day. And globally, because um, kerosene fuel is also used for lighting, we have 38 billion um, that is spent on kerosene alone globally. And it's also toxic and dangerous there are many fires and also there's so many illnesses that occur because of the use of kerosene lanterns. It's also heavy and bulky for shipping. Um, so when we decided to create the solar puff, we decided that um, design matters and that um, absolutely we should consider materials that are sustainable and renewable. So um, many of the other solar lanterns out there use toxic materials like polycarbonate or PVC, and many of them don't consider design in terms of the ability for beauty and uh, wonder to be part of everyday life. So we decided to develop a solar flat pack lantern that would save on shipping costs, it would save on space, volume. Our flat pack lantern basically can flat pack to um, one quarter of an inch thin and is only 2.6 ounces. And you can fit hundreds in a box versus um, a dozen in a box of your normal lanterns. We also use um, PVC free materials and materials that can be recycled as well and um, renewable the the idea of uh, solar lanterns is something that we want to um, pervade in the sub-saharan market so that we can eventually eliminate the use of kerosene lantern in the world so we have defined our company as a for-purpose company. We um, are not a nonprofit. We are definitely working towards economic um, viability. But we also, through um, our humanitarian work, we've realized that the best way to create change in the world is also to create economies, microeconomies as well as macroeconomies. So um, that is our model that we are a for-purpose company. So what makes our solar puff, our flat pack pop open lantern better? It basically is aesthetically designed. It's 
lightweight, low cost, it's hygienic. There's other um, inflatable knockoffs out there where there is a uh, mouth nozzle that is used to inflate the lantern and ours is nozzle free so that you don't need to use your mouth on it in order to inflate. So it's extremely hygienic in regions such as um, such as right now places like Nepal after a natural disaster there's very um, unsanitary conditions and there's the chance of cholera and Ebola so our product eliminates that risk and danger. Our products also waterproof so that it can float and can be submerged underwater and it will be fine. So our market uh, applications are for disaster relief and developing regions as well as um, we are partnering with NGOs in regions where there is um, a lack of power grid as well as um, using the idea of the solar puff for education, health and safety for girls and promote the idea of individualized infrastructure because um, in any country, in any region where you want to put down a power grid, it will, it will take years and billions of dollars in order to implement. And the problem is, is that people need light right now. So in terms of our business model for the first world, we are also marketing kind of like Tom Shoes to um, the camping to the first world home decor market as well as camping and outdoor market. Our competitive advantages are here and um, it's low cost, it's lighter, it's hygienic and we are hoping to implement a recycling program which no other company for solar lighting is doing because at the end of the life cycle what happens to that product we want to implement a way for these products to come back and be upcycled to more solar puffs and um, instead of ending up in a landfill. So the hope is that solar puff is poised to change the trajectory, trajectory of poverty, crime, education, green energy and much more. It just needs to be unleashed and we hope that everyone um, takes a part, small part, in uh, sharing this light. And that would actually bring us to one of the questions, Rushton, you had asked us previously, which is why did we, why did we choose Kickstarter or why did we go on Kickstarter? And I think one of the motivators, I mean, obviously the motivator is needing money. I mean, you need money to buy inventory. It seemed that no matter how much inventory we bought, we were actually selling out of inventory so and shipping inventory um, other places so we went on Kickstarter to obviously raise money but one of the things that happened is as you mentioned initially that in the first three days we reached our goal of twenty five thousand dollars and then we were eking along to about sixty and up to about ninety thousand dollars and at that point um, a, the earthquake in Nepal happened and true to our mission, we decided to actually make part of our fundraise or our, um, our basically our fundraise um, to provide the sol uh, solar pus to Nepal. Um, so when people, we gave a number, we added a number of rewards and those rewards included, you know, buy one, give one to Nepal, buy one, uh, just give one to Nepal. Um, you could buy three, give one, two to Nepal. So the the whole idea was we had we had reached where we wanted to in terms of money, but at the same time we had tried to, we stayed true to our mission in that we wanted to make sure that these lights were where where they were needed, and we were able to do that almost immediately, even before you know we we've just closed our Kickstarter campaign in May on May 22nd and even before we've gotten the funding we've already shipped you know a box over there and we were able to get it over there through um, through a network of uh, volunteers that were going over the, the different questions that people are asking us um, and 
people from all over the world um, are contacting us and um, one of the the best things that we've discovered is that there's an overwhelming um, collective uh, positive um, oh I can't think of the word but um, just incredible graciousness be from people um, that are supporting our mission to bring light to those in need and that's been something that we believed in from the beginning but it's it's um, very reassuring and and um, verification on the power of this product and our mission that there's been so much great support from all over the world. Alice, can I ask you a question? Sure. A couple of questions. Actually, first of all, one, it's, a, it's called a solar puff. That's an individual lamp. Is that what you mean by solar yeah. puff? Yes. Okay. A solar puff, how much is one? What is one? Um, one it, uh, if it's ordered from our website, the retail is uh, $30 for one solar puff. And then what we appear to have lost Rushton. Hello? Uh, Barrett, well, so I think we've lost Rushton, but please answer the question. <laughs> um, it's $30, and but we are selling wholesale at $13.50 to $15 to, um, to NGOs and third um developing regions. Okay, now, one solar puff. What's the intensity of the light and how long does it last? Can you equate it to like a light bulb or? Um, it's actually the equivalent of a task lamp and depending on how far you are away from the light source, um, if, you're, if you put a book and read directly next to the lamp, it's enough to read by, but if you're, ten feet, you know, if you're five feet away, it's not. Um, it is 90 to 100 lumens okay. at high setting okay. and low setting at 60 lumens and then we have a blinking setting which is um, a, a, a distress signal um, so there's three settings on there as well as a um, um, the ability to uh, hang it from a hook or a string within a room in order to create an ambient light. Okay, then how lo when fully charged, how long does the lamp last? Okay, light. On a full charge, it should last between 8 to 12 hours, depending Ooh. on whether it's on high setting or low setting. Wow. And then um, a full charge is 8 hours in direct sunlight. Uh, on a full charge, um, it has a shelf life. Well, if, if if you were to fully charge it and then put it in a drawer, it will last about almost two years, and it, at two years, it'll be fifty percent charged. Wow. We have a one-year warranty, and um, if you're not happy with your solar puff, please return it and. <laughs> will give you a refund. Fabulous. I was looking at it from the point of view, I'm in the movie and film industry, and we're always looking for different types of sources of light, so oh, yes. that, that, that's why the technical questions. Okay. Yes, actually, a lot of people, they're, a neighbor of mine is, is someone that does commercials, and they, they also took it to a, um, a commercial shoot, and they really appreciated the usefulness of the solar puff. On, on site. Excellent. Thank you very much. Can I ask a question? Yes. Please, go ahead. Hi, hi Alice. Um, my name's Richard. I'm, I'm from Cape Town, South Africa, in case you hi. forgot. Hi. <laughs> we, we have a huge problem here in South Africa. I don't know if you've heard of load shedding. No, I um, haven't heard of load shedding, but there have been many people from South Africa that want to distribute there. Yes. Um, do you know what load shedding is? No, I don't. Okay. What has happened?